be afraid to ask a question. Did I get you? Where are you at? Know. Oh, there you are. <laughs> okay. All right. So tonight I'm going to be showing quill work stitching. Um, Bailey's going to help me. She, if there's any questions or anything, she'll let me know. So um, I don't know if any of you have seen my other video that I did with quill wrapping. A lot of it is the same process. Um, can you turn it down? It looks like on my hands area. Is it in that screen? Yeah. Okay. So when I taught quill work wrapping, I showed how I soften and um, clean my quills up. Um, so the sharp part, I just kind of push into a wet paper towel. I clip it and they just stay in there. I, I do both ends because I have younger children. Um, you don't have to, you don't even have to clip them. Some people don't. So personal choice, I guess. So when you're done with this, you can just fold it and throw it away. Uh, the next part is um, just doing this to all your quills that you're going to be using. So when you're using them, you can just put them into a wet paper towel so that they kind of start to soften. So um, what I like to do when I teach these classes is I use a piece of interfacing. Um, it's just like sewing interfacing just so you could kind of practice on it without using any of your real leather. So the first quill work stitch that I'll be showing will be um, the zigzag technique, which is um, one of the more used techniques in quill work. So I will be showing that here in a little bit. Is anyone quilling along? Oh, I don't see. I don't think so. Okay. So my line on the interfacing is about a fourth inch thick. So that's generally like your sizes if you're like doing projects and stuff. Um, you could do get a lot of use out of one quill with um, it being thick like that. So when you're doing quill work stitching, the way I was taught was you use two needles. So one needle goes at the bottom and another one straight across on the top of it. So then it's like that. And it's walking over. So there's a needle at the bottom and one on the top. I'll be using three different colors to show just different. Um, when I change a quill out, I'll just grab a random color that's different so you can kind of see the process. So they're softened now and they're able to be bent and used without it breaking. So when teaching classes, I kind of just, I just use my fingers. You can use a spoon or if you're like at home and things like that, you could always use your teeth. But just flatten it until like all the air comes out of it. Do you think if I showed it at like this angle, it'd be easier for them? Yeah, you can see the lines, yeah. Okay. And if I should sit beside you and just sit in front of the- From the camera? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry guys, it's always different and difficult with Zoom. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? I have a question. Okay. Um, my name is Andy, and I was just wondering, 
um, I got here late, but how did you color your um, quills? Did you already have those dyed? Um, you just put it down. Um, so like later on this summer, um, Jen actually wants me to do a full quill class on like how to do the entire porcupine. Like start to finish where like you do the quill plucking and stuff. But for like these quills that I've dyed, these colors, it's like a pink, it's like a bright yellow green. And it's like a turquoisey color. I use that writ dye. Oh, okay. And so I've just, I've used that. It's kind of been more of my go-to. I have a question. Okay. Um, when you said your interface was four inch thick, is, is it? One fourth inch. Thick? Oh, one fourth inch. Okay. Yeah, so like the, the little two lines that I drew on here are one fourth inch. Okay apart so like that's kind of like a good um I think this interfacing is like 72 F I want to say is like the um thickness okay so it's like a little bit of the thicker one I think it's um fusible on one side so oh power yeah oh okay and so yeah any other questions? Okay. Shauna, when you say the needles, like you have one above and one below, is it connected to one string or are they two separate strings? Two separate, like, okay. Two separate strings. Can you okay, see? so you just have a knot in each yep, side? Yep. Okay. Yep, on the back. And then there's two on the front. So. Okay. Awesome. And up here. Awesome. Then, yeah. Okay. Where are the other ones? I got them. Kind of like beating if you beat. Yeah. <laughs> So we'll try to angle it down so I can do this. If you guys have questions, just ask them while I'm working on it. So. Okay. So you start at the bottom. Yep. And so then you take your thread and you just go across the top of it. Come out the back and just kind of make sure your, your threads don't um, cross. So then just hold your thread on the bottom that you just did your quill with. So then you're taking it across the top. All right. And then you tack it down on the top again with a top thread. So your thread don't ever cross. And then you just bend it. And that's your zigzag technique. So then I always kind of go all over the place, but like you just come up next to where the bottom one is. And then you're going to cross and then you just keep going. But it's just holding your threads. And these are regular needles, right? They're not mm -hmm. rubber needles? No, okay. they're just beading needles. I'll do like one more of it and then I'll change the color so I can, you can see how I add a quill in. So it just goes over. Where's the camera right here? Yep, right there. So the thread is just a bit over the top. Do you guys see it? Yep. What the? <laughs> So then just hold your, your thread tight and then you can kind of move your quill around. So I'll do the bottom and then I'll change a quill. Teaching like is always tough to zoom for me because yeah. I always like pull my pieces back towards me and then start trying to like go where I'm comfortable. Mm -hmm. And the camera can't focus. Yeah, <laughs> and the camera's all over the place. Okay, I'll add in a pink quill. Yeah, oh, I'm over here. Right there, yep. And just flattening with my fingers. You can do it with a spoon, you can do it with your teeth, however.
out of my pocket, but trying to show the camera. Mm -hmm. So you take your quill and you put it behind. So your new quill you're adding in is like pink. It'll be behind and it's kind of at the bottom. So then just like how you did the first one, you just take your thread go over the top. <laughs> okay. So then you fold them both up. <laughs> so I'm just tacking that top one down. So when you have a longer quill like that, you could take your um, scissor in and just trim it. So then this pink is a little bit loose because you're just adding it in. But if you hold the bottom, you can kind of stretch it and then it goes flat. Kind of took me a while. Well, I was learning to quilt to kind of figure that out, how you could kind of, if you hold your thread tight, you could kind of move them around. I have another question. Okay, go ahead. So on your um, did you have two thread, two separate threads in there? Mm -hmm. So the top one's holding the top loop down, and then the yep. bottom's doing the bottom. Okay. Yep. So then, if you could see that the back, it's like the threads just kind of stay in a line; they don't cross each other or anything like that. Okay. All right. Can you see yep. it? Too? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always so unsure. Like in person, it's a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. So. So like when you get to this point, so you're gonna say you're gonna do a new quill. Um, if, even if you're using pink, you would still change it because when you tack it down at the bottom there, it's not long enough to go all the way back up for another. So that's where you're just like add in a different quill or if you're doing all one color, that's where you would add one in. Quite yeah, I had to be able to just come in, so. Okay. When your clothes are shorter, you could kind of leave them behind.
Is that that wind turbine? Yeah. Hey, you can be found into. Okay, I'll add in another quill. Looks like Barney color. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <Can I judge? laughs> Anyone have any other questions? Checking the chat box too. I don't see anything. Should be the Zoom queen by now. It's like all my classes via Zoom. <laughs> That's why my Jen asked you to do it. <laughs> so I'm adding the quill in behind. So a lot of it is just learning how to hold your thread to keep your thread tight. Kind of the same concept with beadwork too when you learn double needle you gotta hold your um, double thread yeah yep oh, other. <laughs> so this is exact you just tack it at the top hold it tight fold it down <laughs> no, no, the stand's not well. It is keeps it? it steady, but I have to like move it, you know. Yeah. I won't, I won't. Okay, so this one I'm gonna. Can I ask it. what size? Can yeah. I ask what size needle you use? Um, these ones are size eleven. Um, short, the short sharp ones. But it's basically whatever you're comfortable with. I know there's some people that use like the longer beading needles for um, quill work and stuff too, and that's fine. So I just went with what's comfortable for me. Um, they're just a size 11, sharp, short. Okay, so I'm gonna tack the bottom and then I'll show you how we end the zigzag stitch. And then I'll show how to do the other. Okay, so this is where it's a little bit different. So when you're gonna end it, I'm gonna try to go as close to the camera. You come up instead of going across like you usually do, you go behind. Go behind and then you take your quill and you just flip it over. I'll show it again before my quill dries up. So then um, you bring your quill, put your thread behind it, 
and then you just flip it over. Then you go through. And so then what you do with this like little end part is just tuck it under and it'll dry behind there. If that's helpful. <laughs> Can I look them in? Um. Okay. So any questions after that technique? No? Okay. Okay then. Mm. No, keep okay, <laughs> <laughs> Did you go on Zoom? Huh? How long was your Zoom class? Did you use a whole hour? Mm -mm. I, I just opened up if they asked, had any questions or whatever and answered the questions and then ended it. Yeah. That's what I did with the first one because like there was a couple of Zoom coming. <laughs> yeah. So like only Blizzard we got this year. <laughs> it's harder for like online because if they don't have questions and you can't, I mean, you don't know what they yeah. want to know. And it's like for other ones here, they can ask you as Are they're going. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for the second technique, which is like, they call it simple band. Some people call it straight band. It just kind of varies. You do your thread the same, one on the top and one on the bottom. Just all COVID -y. <laughs> toxins. <laughs> Kidding. I know it's so different teaching, like. But when I took when I was teaching at United Tribes, an uh, older lady told me that she was taught that you don't put the quills in your mouth because the white dyes inside of the quills is is mm -hmm. healthy. Yeah, it's like poisonous. Mm -hmm. But I've never known that. I've done it my <laughs> all these years. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So we're going to do this, um, the bottom, just like how we did the zigzag, you go across it, hold your thread. So we're doing this straight band, simple band, just like how I showed that you end zigzag, you go behind it and then you just twist your quill. So then it's creating like a straight line where it doesn't have the zigzag. If any of these little ends are sticking out, you could just use your scissor to kind of tuck them underneath and then they'll dry that way. How many different stitches are there in cool work? I don't know, there's a lot. These two that I'm showing now are like the most used because there's also like quill work wrapping is considered a stitch. Mm -hmm. and then there's like two quill, there's diamond, mm -hmm. you know. So I just went over the bottom and tacked it. Oh, I was like, I can't hear myself. <laughs> and so then you take it and you go behind. And then you tuck it around, oops, tuck it around the thread. Any questions on this technique? Can you show it one more time? Yeah, I'll show it a couple more times. Add a yellow quill in.
I'm adding a quillin. from behind. And then you fold it over. Does it make sense to you guys? I'm just focused trying to get the hang of the first stitch. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> I'll catch up though. I'll I catch up. Eh? <laughs> I um I recorded the process of doing them. I put it onto my YouTube. If awesome. Thank you. Yeah, so that you could watch it and like rewatch it and <laughs> yeah it's nice so then when you're done you just tuck your quill underneath they should scissors aren't very sharp so can you, um, can you put your youtube link in the chat yeah for your youtube name it's just more called hey by shana k-a G E by Shauna, I think. All the other? Maybe. But that's what you could search for. Yep. You can search for that and then it'll take you to the videos. It'll also take you to the um, sessions I did for United Tribes. Awesome. Thank you. It's like a, a live quilling session too. Okay. Is there any other questions or anything? None in the chat. So I think it's coming up in the um, summer session of classes that Jen kind of planned for a full like quill work um, start to finish with the porcupine, which would actually be like plucking quills and the hair and dyeing quills and stuff. So we haven't set an official date for it yet, but it will be happening. And this session will also be recorded and put on to Sitting Bull College's YouTube. How do you re-wet the quill if it dries out while you're working with it? You just... So I have mine in a wet paper towel. So then like if they get too like soft or... Um, like spongy if that white stuff starts coming out of the quill I kind of just let them um, dry up a little bit and then I kind of work with them again some people don't but that's kind of how I've done it if you could always soak it in water 
put some of my paper towels wet and then it just kind of provides like the firmness of them that I like to work with, I guess. So. What kind of paper towels? That is like a shop one? Um, I don't know. I use both. So like Jen had shop paper towels here and I just have regular ones for my house. So any of them can be used. So I did the um, tips, the sharp tips, and then also the little ends because those could be kind of prickly too. Just Do you have any finished products? Um, not here with me. I can show you. Hold on. I'll pull some up on my phone. Um, Shauna, would you um, have you ever dyed the quills with Easter egg tabs? No, I've honestly, um, I've um, kept some from when my girls dyed eggs last year, but I've never tried it yet. Because like quills could be kind of fragile at times. So then like certain dyes like yeah. don't always like, um, like take well to the quills or like some, some dyes, if they're too strong, they kind of like melt the quill or they get all twisted it's um it's kind of difficult because then i don't like what to about kool-aid yeah kool-aid a lot of people do use i've heard people use kool-aid yeah so these are some of the pieces that i've done pretty beautiful and those are all writ dye yep writ dye do you ever mix your colors yes i do Sometimes I just throw colors together and sometimes I hope it works. And I like those ones. So then there's earrings that you could use using these styles. Oh, those um, are pretty. Yeah, like the top is zigzag, then that floral part there is um, like the band. And then those are the band. Oops. What's your um, background? What's the, um, what do you uh, do? Brain, brain pen. Oh. Brain tan leather. Oh, pretty. And then also I've done these, which are like. Oh, those are pretty too. Yeah, those are done um, with zigzag and and both of these uh, stitching. I like those. That's those circle things they're using now, huh? The uh. Like the those little crystals. So on, John. Yeah. Yeah, what are they calling those? They're just like so on crystals. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're really cool. I got, I just ordered some. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's another example before. Yeah, pretty. Mm -hmm. so where do you order your beads from? Um, I think I got these ones from Shipwreck, maybe. Yeah, a lot of people use shipwreck. And then I get them from, I think it's called beadandtrim.com. Can you put those in the chat as well? Yeah, Bailey, I'll put it in there. Bead and trim and shipwreck. Yeah, okay, sure. Well, oh, sorry. Oh, no, go Ship, shipwreck's good for like quantities. You want to buy like ten, like ten hanks at once. It's, I thought that was a deal versus paying yeah. per hank. But, but yeah, go ahead. Oh no, I was gonna say if there's something else. I think that's where we'll end the Zoom for tonight. Um, Thank you so together. much. Yeah, it just we just wanted to do like a quick demonstration. It'll be uploaded, but then I also have other resources and stuff. If you want to watch like the YouTube videos and stuff, I try to put more teaching into them. So. The quill wrap technique that I did um, on the last class, which I think was January, or February, um, I, I have that technique on my YouTube too. Oh, yeah. Thank you. That was really cool. Thank, yeah, thank you. you. Thank you for thank you. Thank, thank you. Good thank you. Good job. And then also, I'm also on Facebook. If any of you guys have questions, you could always message me. You're the best ever. <laughs> Thank. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Doksha. Uh huh. Doksha. Okay.